Half a ticket just to kick it. I ain't just do it, I did it different. And know my dog stay down and committed. And fuck all of that small talk, it's big business. I slipped up, but I bounced back, I admit it. There's some things that I done did that I can't mention. And I ain't just do it, I did it different. Put it all on the table. You! Two! So I was, I was really thinking about. This defense, man. Saving grace. That's what I'm going to call this segment. Detroit Lions that are on the fringe or not on the fringe. And we're just going to rock with it, man. The first person I want to start off with is Jelani Tavai. I think Jelani Tavai's career is salvageable in Detroit. I really do. I really do. I think that the defense made him think too much last year. It made him do too much. And when he got comfortable with certain things and certain tasks, just like in the Arizona game um, a year when he was a rookie, he was very good when he was a rookie. Very serviceable when he was a rookie. I think that Jelani Tavai... First and foremost, initially, we shouldn't have picked Jelani Tavai. I wanted Ninkovich out of Michigan. I thought that was, you had a 3-4 defense. You, you know, you you need a pass rusher, a real pass rusher, not some flowers motherfucker. You need a real pass rusher. Someone who does, that's what they've done. That's what they've done, and that's what they do. But seeing Jelani Tavai his first year, I really liked him. I really liked him. I really respected what he he added to the game with a thumper mentality. And he was he was lost in zone sometimes, you could see that. And he's a very young player. But his pursuit in gaps is what I really like. His instinct is what I really like. I believe that Giovanni Jelani Tavai can really save his career. Especially in a 4-3 base set. Um, him playing that right side out right outside linebacker. I think he would be amazing. Um, simply because when you look at uh, when you look at the Saints and what they did, uh, Glenn was able to do with gap responsibility. I mean their rudimentary thing was gap responsibility and pursuit. Um, they played a wide nine. They played multiple D set. You know, we, we know they played a three, four. We know they played a four, three. They played a hybrid defense, but their rudimentary set was usually like a, a four, two, five or a, a, a four, three, um, the three, four, they could get into if, depending on what they wanted to do. And that three, four wasn't as, ex- as exotic. As people try to believe, their 3-4 was really, um, it had gap responsibility, it had gap principles. It was a 3-4 with 4-3 principles, like a Wade Phillips type defense. And that's where I really believe he got his education from when he was in Dallas, a Wade Phillips. And the coordinator is, you know, he was a player himself, so he can really speak to the eyes and ears of the player. And, and that's really different from what we've had. You see a coach um, in Glenn that's going to understand players and see what they see on the field. So one, Jelani Tavai is not as bad as we think. Jelani Tavai is good at three things. One, he's he's more fast than twitchy, okay? If you utilize him in his pursuit straight line ability, he can be a star. Two, he's a bigger linebacker. So we need to utilize his power, his also a little little shake ability that he has and really make him a thumper for real on the outside. And three, at Hawaii, he played a joker linebacker position. And this is what I really want to harp on. A joker linebacker is someone who can really play anything. You know, you, you got to be aware of where they are on the field. 
And this is the same thing I love with Micah Parsons. I think Micah Parsons is a better pass rusher than Jelani Tavai. But that's not nothing to take away from Jelani Tavai. That's not nothing to take away from Micah Parsons either. It's just like more polished in certain areas. And that's why you see the upgrade ability. Jelani Tavai is can play middle linebacker he can play it he can stand in but he has to have a certain role in that middle linebacker spot if you want him to be a zone middle linebacker initiate that from the get-go work on his lateral movement train his mind to understand zone concepts he's had an interception before he, he it seems like well he's in the nfl let's first point that out so he knows something He's done everything right just far. He's a second round pick, so he knows something. Next. <clears throat> Next. When you play him in that 4 3 set, and he's a right outside linebacker, his goals and duties need to be clear, concise just like if he was in the inside middle linebacker. When you have an inside middle linebacker in a 3-4, um, you're gonna have two middle linebackers. One's gonna have a specific goal, either to clean up or to drop back in zone. One is gonna be kind of like the orchestrator and one's gonna be kind of like the facilitator. I liken this to uh, the 2001 Ravens. They had uh, Ray Lewis and I think his name was Hartwell. I'll put it in the comments below. Anyway, Hartwell signed a big contract in Atlanta for the Atlanta Falcons. And Ray Lewis, he told Ray Lewis, I, I called all the plays and I was the cleanup guy and I had the most tackles. I was really the starter of the defense. He left the, he left Baltimore and, and he signed with Atlanta. And we've never heard of him since. This is literally what's going to happen to Jelani Tavai. Jelani Tavai needs to be next to a Collins, needs to be next to a playmaker that can get him set, a facilitator. He needs to be next to a person that can put him in the right positions because I don't trust Jelani Tavai to call plays at all. I don't trust him to, to call plays, make line plays, no, to make audibles, no. That's why you pay Collins a lot of money. That's why you brought Collins back. Collins is going to be your zone guy. Jelani is going to be a thumper. And that's it. That is it. Now, what I do like about Jelani is he can penetrate through offensive linemen. He can block shed and he can blitz with the best of them. Does he finish off the blocks? Does he finish off the blitz? Not always, not consistent. We've had him for a couple years. I don't think he's a terrible player. I think in a different situation, he's going to be a very good player. In a New England, where they actually teach their fucking linebackers, he would be great. In a Miami Dolphins setting, he would be great. I think he just needs coaching, fundamental coaching on play design, play recognition. He would be phenomenal. I think that Glenn is the perfect perfect guy for him because when he puts him in the 4-3 this is what you need to do you need to play contain on the outside or you need to play zone that's it if it's run play contain bring that runner inside if it's zone just drop back that's it like comment subscribe this is Avery Giovanni Spirit of Detroit Podcast Yeah. yeah, bitch, I'm undeniable. My neck and wrist are blind to yeah. hoe. We get lots yeah. of dough, you cuffing bitches, we a pop and go. Talking all that bullshit.